welcome to the Coach Tyler Show. Hi there, welcome, welcome to this live podcast, um, the Coach Kayo Show, Kayo Day here. Um, want to take this time um, to uh, give you the opportunity to make your way in um, to this live podcast, to share this live podcast uh, where we discuss and talk all things soccer. Uh, it's no different tonight. Um, so I'm looking forward to um, having uh, as much interaction as you know as much uh, discussion um, on what we will discuss tonight. Um, nevertheless, I uh, can't start the show uh, this live podcast without reminding you that greater is he that is in us uh, than he that is in the world. And while we, um, we discuss as our priority um, things about soccer on and off the field. Um, our objective, uh, our objective, continue to remain around um, our young people and and, and advancing um, a purpose-driven life. Um, it's very, it's very necessary. Um, it's very important to have a purpose in your life. It's very important to know who you are um, in this very challenging and, and um, complicated and unpredictable world. Uh, you need to have purpose because it establishes a clear roadmap uh, for you to live um, because there's many things that will distract you there there are many things out there um, to cause you to uh, want to give up there's so many barriers um, there's so many mistakes that you uh, would have made um, that um, you can look at the present situation and and recognize that you've played a part in some way or the other in where you are and and that could uh, at times lead you into a, a place of darkness so it's important uh, to have purpose and just let me remind you that being a soccer player can also be a purpose i know that's not what um, people like to make you think um, obviously uh, no one made me um, think like that they they made me believe or they they give me all indication that my life would be a wasted life that i will be nothing that i will turn out into nothing um, and their definition of nothing is being on the streets or um, getting in, getting involved with law, or uh, just a wasted life, just hanging on the corner. Um, so I know, I know there's um, there's many people out there who, you know, look at a sport like soccer and and oftentimes say it to their kids, say it to their friends, say it to their loved ones, sorry, that um, you are wasting your life. Because it was said to me on many occasions, um, and it's more, it's more um, demotivated, demotivate, um, it demotivates you even more when it's coming from those who you tend to trust or who you tend to hold in high regard and you feel like they have your best interests at heart. So it's always, um, it's a difficult time and 
that's why that is why I want to reiterate that you know you have to find your purpose in this life you the individual and it's important to have individuals around you who are concerned more about the purpose of your life not what you should be doing not what you should um uh, take on based on societal norms and expectations but who you are why were you created what uniqueness that you have that the world needs to come into contact with i think when you have more people who are driving uh, driving young people in in that direction uh, then we create a healthy society then we, we then we create respectful young people then we rec- then we create young people that will reverence uh, people of the past um, it's not like that now because some way along the line um, we we got it we got it we got it wrong so uh, the relationships and the interaction uh, and the integration of things that you know a cause or what we thought was the reason for uh, a decent life uh, there's a lot of us coming to realize that you know that wasn't so true so it's a lot of mistrust and there's a lot of um this hi marsha good to see you and please do share share there's a lot of conflicts and confusion about um the direction that you should be going as an individual and the only way that happens is true purpose so what's the objective of this podcast um it's we want to discuss the, the importance of being selected on merit um and there's there's many um, there's many uh, negativity around that word uh, to the to the very point that it is used loosely like so many other words in 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 this world um, but merit supposed to uh, have so much power behind the advancement of people that i think it, it is totally lost its place but we still want to discuss uh, the importance of it um and to maybe reconnect with the importance or um, how we must pay attention uh, to merit or meritocracy if we want to go there so the objective in this podcast hopefully um, and i firmly believe that we you know to encourage our young people and we know now more than ever i know um, now more than ever um, this is a demerit society so is important to help or to not help i don't like the word help um, is important to encourage i don't like the word help because you know regardless of what you say or what you do you're not helping no one they have to make their own choices they have to choose and that's why a lot of people like to think they're they're helping by saying and by getting involved and by talking they think they're helping um at the end of the day whatever someone whatever decision is made is because of a person's choice regardless regardless of the outcome is still their choice and you have to respect that so we in this demerit um society and i know it's causing a lot of demotivated young people because they don't have a clear path and this is why this is important um it's important uh, for young people so please please do share this live podcast um encourage um young people to get involved even you adults because we have to learn so we can teach so we can empower 
and it's not to forward or advance um, just the Coach Kayo show, but it's to encourage more people to come into contact with meritocracy, with people of value, with people of quality, uh, because this show is uncommon. It's about authenticity and be, because it's based on experiences. It's, it's based on what I am living out everyday situations that I encounter, not necessarily you encounter it, so you might have a different perspective and that that is um, that is respected. Uh, but this show and this live podcast is about events and it's about um, the authenticity of this soccer environment um, and, and we use it um, to bring, you know, a positive message. You know, I remember how important is meritocracy in this demerit society that we have, which, you know, it's so hard for a young person to truly believe. It don't matter what is in front of them. It's very difficult for them not to go to a place of doubt, a place of fear. Um, you know, they lose their self-esteem. They lose their self-worth. Uh, they lose all of those things because of society, because of what uh, is happening to them and because there's they see no advancement in their lives, regardless of how hard, how dedicated, how much they want to achieve great things. And a lot of times is a lot of times these things happen to people who are obviously or oftentimes trying to do their best they can, they are in, they encounter these barriers. So I want to quickly remind you that, you know, as a person who believes in God, in Jeremiah 1 and 5, he said, before you were, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. This is why purpose is very important. But it's important to understand what merit is, which we will discuss in a few you're in a demerit society that will kill your dreams, that will suffocate you, that will make you think that if you're not following um, the, the trends or the common things, you will be nothing. You will be blackballed. You will be um, blacklisted. You will never see the light of day. I'm here to remind you that that is a lie because there's one God. He said, before, before I form you in the womb, I knew you. No one is responsible for your life. God is. Not your mother, not your father, even though they like to think they are, they're not responsible for your life. Before you were formed. God knew you. He said he sanctified you. <laughs> Those are powerful words. And he ordained you. And he was talking to Jeremiah and he said, you as a prophet. So no one didn't decide that. So a lot of times when you're not you, you're, and it's a very tricky situation. When you dis disassociate yourself from things, and you disassociate disassociate you disassociate yourself from people. Um, they use ill words, and they pray for your downfall. They want you to suffer. Yes, your own family. The, the, the same ones who claim that they so love you and everything else, they prey on your downfall. They want to see you suffer because maybe events in your life, maybe mistakes you've made, maybe whatever is the cause, they will prey on your downfall because this is the society we're in. And you refuse to follow what people expect you to follow they will they will pray on your downfall but that is not the merit we're talking about 
because that's also merit. They give, they give power to their words, and words form things, and words can destroy, and they utilize that. And then it happens, and they say, good for you. That is also merit. They say, well, you see, we are clear. This is what happened. This is the outcome. Good. So I'm here to remind you, because this is the objective here, that you before those who want to take so much responsibility for your life, there's a place to honor, there's a place to respect, there's a place for all of that. But that comes through what you are sanctified and what you are ordained to do regardless. Those things must stand. And a lot of people hear this, um, hear this passage because they lose control. Because only one person should have control. Whatever you do is your choice. Young people, understand, however someone treats you, family or not, is their choice. Because it's ruining a lot of young people. It's ruining so many lives. Kids don't even want to be in their own home. They're there because they're scared. They're there because they're living in fear. They're there because they don't know what is their next move. Because they have to reverence something that's not necessarily true. They have to reverence something that wants to have control. So it's a good reminder for all of you uh, in this demerit society that while they might have the diagnosis, they don't have the prognosis. They don't have the final say. And that is something that all of us, including myself, must truly come to awareness with that it don't matter what is in front of you. It don't, And if you are playing a part in what is happening for you, it's a good time to go in a different direction. Because whatever you plant will grow. So you're not exempt from responsibility of what might be happening in and around your circles. You're not exempt from that. But that don't change the fact that what you were born to do, it still exists. And whatever you're going through is temporary. You must stay the course. And you must take a different direction to stay the course too. Don't keep doing the same thing Expecting a different result. Expecting a different result. Sorry. So what will be the outcome at the end of this show? What will you learn? Why are you bringing people into the show to come into contact with the importance of meritocracy? Hmm. That you will have a renewed faith in your gift, in your purpose. At the ending of this show, you will have a renewed faith. You will have a renewed strength. You will have the joy of knowing that you don't have to be afraid of what is on the inside of you that you so desire to go after that everyone else trying their utmost best to make sure it don't happen. Have your fate, your personal life uh, is not so important. Your purpose life is much more important. So I want to discuss three key things uh, and the importance of, uh, of meritocracy. But before I do that, just a quick interruption to 
you know, introduce you and reintroduce you to um, the KMXVI uh, merch. Um, please do if you wish to support this sporting movement. Please do so. So it help us to afford um, what we're doing in the community. Um, we are helping young people, offering um, different opportunities for them uh, to come into contact with the game, but not more so the game, but creating an environment and a culture that will begin the process of encouraging and empowering um, young people uh, to get back into a, a fulfilled life. There's too many young people out there doing too many crazy things. We see it every day. Every day I go to the field. Um, it's crazy from seven, six years old, the, the things that you hear and the things that you see. Um, it's, re, it's, it's, it's wow. It's a wow moment. So we're trying to do our part in terms of giving access um, to young people to come into an environment where, you know, principles can be taught, where discipline can be taught, um, where res responsibility can be taught, accountability, but more importantly, purpose um, can be, you know, you know, the, the, the life of purpose can be encouraged. So please do support because it's bigger than, you know, bigger than KMSA. It's about our young people. So we'll be right back after this. Coyote, McKinnon and Company are ready to dress you in one of their most stylish, comfortable and attractive athletic gears this fall for you to achieve that desired athletic goal. Check out their online store today for your joggers, tank tops, bras, backpacks, sweatshirts and everything else you'll need to complete that look. It's Coyote, McKinnon and Company. We care. Welcome back to the Coach Kaya Show. This is your live podcast. Please do share. Um, it's much more important to share. Uh, please let me know that you are here. Um, and please share uh, your your perspective. Um, hi, Simonette. Good to see you. Hope all is well. Um, yeah. It's very important to have different perspective uh, from this uh, from this point of view because um, there's 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 no one way, you know. People also look at, at at merit from a negative standpoint because of how it's used. Of it creates um, sometimes it creates tyranny. So uh, sometimes people are self-observed because they think. Uh, they have all the answers, and maybe they do have a lot of answers, but to have all the answers um, is very difficult. But also, you can seem like you have all the answers when you're talking to someone who got zero answers. So there's so many um, different angles, and so it's important to have different perspective, to have uh, different ideas, because this podcast is also about learning. Um, it's about empowering all young people, and they can't do. They cannot. They cannot grow if there's um, there's not enough there uh, to help that process. So when I look at merit, I look at you have to earn something. You have to earn. Um, and what in whatever context you're in, uh, with whatever context you have to learn. You have to learn. You have to be. You have to be competent. You have to. Um, you have to be clear about um, your system and about uh, about your great about your plan, and you have to show 
uh, objectively why you do the things you do. And we clearly know that that don't exist a lot. It don't exist. If it exists, it's in the minority based on my experiences, and based on what I know, what I'm privy to. You know, that is not the focus. Um, one of the things you see, it's a lot of these private soccer coaches um, who, uh, for some reason, believe that, you know, just because they've played, just because their family played, uh, just because they have been around the game, um, they are a private coach. And one thing I learned from um, from a mentor that I had or still have is, you know, way back when, when I was, you know, taking part in, 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 in stuff like that, when I didn't know better. But one of the things about me, for some reason, when I when I was involved in that, is something in me always would remind me that you need to know, you need to know more. And these are things that I don't need to be promoting stuff because there's something that tells me you need to know more. You need to know more. You need to do, you need to do better. There's a there's a reason why the players in Europe and they're they're succeeding and they're growing and, and they're developing, and you look at them on TV, they're doing something. And you obviously not doing those things, um, if you really look at it. And 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 one of the things I learned that you you cannot, and that's why I talk about uh, one private coaches within within the soccer environment, and that you know oftentimes we believe it's based on merit. Because if you don't know that you don't know, what will be the outcome? So. You know, one of the things I learned that you had to have a, a total system in place. And you had to be able to have to, to objectively show progress, show growth. I'm not going to dive deep into that. But there's clearly someone who have time to constantly uh, show the whole of Instagram and the whole of Facebook, uh, their private sessions and and show like who they're working with and and how these players are achieving things. Uh, by experience, I know you don't have a system. So the only thing uh, self satisfy is promoting. Um, what no one can really judge. Because in order to judge it, you have to see it ahead of time. What you see on a field is not what you see on a field. It must be a representation of what you plan and the systems you have in place. And in order to do that, you have to base that, you have to have the merit to do it. And what is merit? You have to be competent. You have to be competent. That means you have to go and learn. So if you are unqualified to do what you're doing, that means you're not standing on merit. Because a doctor cannot go and perform a surgery without going and being qualified or um have the, the level of competency to go and perform a surgery. A mechanic cannot open a mechanic shop without showing that he or she is qualified and they are competent enough to do what they're doing. A person cannot not, a person can, they, they can't even have a restaurant selling food without proving that they are competent and being given the license to do it. They just can't say, well, I'm a good cook. I mean, they do it. 
But if someone says, if someone took your food and they got sick, you'll be liable. And to not have a license to prove your competency, you'll get in trouble. Excuse me, sorry. So within the SAC environment, one of the, the things that you continue to see is uh, people's inability to respect competency. So without competency, you lack merit because what did you earn to prove and what systems and what plans do you have in place for what you're saying? Now, you know, people might be offended, but it's not to offend you. You have a great responsibility. You know, there's, there's top clubs in the world. You're not even considered. You say you're a developmental coach or you're a private coach. Um, but why you could only get away with that here? And so what you're saying to the more advanced world who have actually developed players, who have a proven track record, how to develop players within a system, within a, within a clear plan and structure, what are you saying to them? And when you look at the outcome, it's vastly different. So obviously, what is being done here is not based on merit. So three key things I want to talk about and why meritocracy is so vital. Only three things. And maybe you will have some, you know, some extra ones to, to add there. But I just, I just have three. And why our young uh, soccer players who love and have so much passion for the game and want to one day be in a stadium, which they should, playing for the national team. That's why you play the game, to get to the highest level. Um, that's why you go for um, IEDPs, because you want to advance. Um, the individualized aspect of development is important. Just as long as it's drawing to the, the holistic concept, it's important. Because just as how the game comes with variables, um, you come with your own uniqueness, and that needs to also be advanced. But it needs to have uh, it needs to have the whole view, the holistic view. And and young players are entering, and you've seen it more and more and more. And there's a lot of promotion of uh, of the exercises but no promotion of the plans. But then, obviously, okay, I don't want to share my plans, but what is the outcome? It's very difficult to take ownership for developing a player when you haven't started within zone one and take them all the way. It's very difficult to claim it. Not saying it can't happen, but it's very difficult. Before I jump into those these three things, you know, I have to bring to you the learning corner sponsored by R and K Just Clean. Um, this learning corner is important. It constantly um, helps me uh, to keep learning because in order for you to, 
to do better, you first have to learn. So hopefully um, you will stay here and, 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 and interact with me on um, these three important aspects of why uh, meritocracy is so vital um, in terms of developing our youth. I will be right back. seeing in, in modern day football is 11 and the 7 comes inside to make the back four compact which allow the 3 and the 2 to utilize space on the side allowing the 10 and the 8 uh, to, to get up the field and add more numbers into the attack. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Teams are defending with three. Um, teams are defending with four based on where the ball is. But I want to look at a specific thing here. When the ball starts in the middle, the four becomes a two and the three slides in. And they switch the ball and they play the ball to the three and the two becomes an extra midfielder okay so it becomes now a box in the middle remember you have three in the middle they now have four in the middle welcome back to the coach kaya show this is your live podcast please do share share if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do please do so now um, on YouTube, Kyrie McKinnon and Co. Hit that notification bell so you know when we're on every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, obviously, soccer is in numbers game. You're always trying to have numbers up and rarely do you want numbers down. So key things one of the key things for me uh, that merit why meritocracy is so important within soccer is self-development um one of for me one of the misconception in 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 development is uh, they're so goal oriented there's there's a big focus on goals smart goals and and all these things and it has its place you know it's not like you don't need goals but um, one thing about um, meritocracy and, and self-development, it encourages growth. Growth is much more um, important than, than goals. See, growth is about being intentional. It's about being... Um, it's about transformation. You see, goals is you you get to a goal and then what is next? So they talk about short-term goals and long-term goals. When, when that goal is achieved, then what happens? Growth is lifelong. Goal, they said be specific, be attainable. Be time bound. So goals come with all these different restrictions. When you talk about growth, you're talking about a lifelong experience. So in order for you, um, which is key within soccer, is to prioritize growth. When we talk about growth, we're talking about transformation. You know, no one, no player or no youth will fulfill their purpose without transformation. And transformation comes through behavioral changes. And that starts with uh, 
people who have earned the right to develop uh, this behavior within the athlete. And don't say, well, well, I don't need uh, to, do, to go and get a piece of paper to tell me I can coach. Well, that's the problem right there because it's not the paper, it's not the certification that um, give you the authenticity or give you the meritocracy. No, it's the attitude and the mindset to be a learner. Because if I'm a learner, then I'll become a good teacher. I can't lead until I've been led. You know, going back to one of the key things that, you know, God spoke about in train up the child. So on one hand, he said, I form all the thing and I sanctify it and I ordained it. Yet he said, train up. Chanak. Because, not because you have something, it means that you will be able to transform it into the world to bring about transformation. That's why we're unique, because we're all leaders. We have something that could bring about transformation. So meritocracy is very important to self-development and to prioritize transformation in the lives of young people. When a person says that he or she is a coach, but it's based on no merit, it disqualifies them when it relates to transformation. Even if you're a gifted person, you must study hard to show yourself a proof. Because you have to grow. Even when you put a seed down in the ground, it has a tree and it has a fruit. But until you cultivate that seed, until you water that seed, until you nurture that seed, until you move away the weeds, the turns, until you move all of those things, if you don't, that, that seed will die in the ground and it will never. we will never see the fruit. So you just can't say that you're gifted. You just can't say that I have played and I know and my family play and everybody in my family play on the national team and, and, and this and that and, and my, my family play professionally and all of that. Yes, yes, it garners you some experience. But wisdom is better. Knowledge is better. It's not what someone has done. It's what you know because those people are not coaching or developing the players that you are involved with. You are. And you are responsible for facilitating a process of self-development. That's, your, that's what you're doing. You're facilitating. You are bringing that young athlete into connection with a process that will bring about transformation, that will change their behavior, that will change their attitude, that will bring them closer to their purpose. So, Having that merit and striving for that merit, you actually bring about self-development. To do that is obviously the opposite. Um, and I think a lot of people look past that um, because the convenience is much more important than the self-development. The convenience of time, the convenience of money, the convenience of um, personal life, those things take precedence over 
self-development. But until it hits home, it will never hit home. Because without some, without a person, if if a young person fails to grow, and I'm talking about the chronological growth, I'm not just talking about the biological growth. I'm also talking about the psychological growth about the emotional growth, all these things that we sometimes, we we look beyond it because uh, maybe um, the player will not play. Maybe the player don't want to play. But that interaction, that constant connection with, uh, with people who speaks to development but lacks meritocracy, you are stifling the growth of an individual holistically. Because when something goes in and someone is unable, like a young athlete, unable to negotiate things, they take it in. They take it in. And it forms their behavior and it it gives them this feeling of this is where I need to go when I feel this way. And woe be unto a young person if it's negative. Because even in positive situations, when they feel a certain way, they will reconnect or they, they will have a desire to go back into those things. And it's not just young zone one players, but it's young adults. It's players 15, 16, 17 but also it's 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 because of what has happened to them as a youth and a lot of these things that you've seen at 18 and 19 players will tell you this is what was happening when they were you 13 and then they come into this they come into contact with this belief that you know what maybe i can But then there's a dopaminic effect that keeps, will continue to, to pull at them as they go in a different direction because now they're learning new ways. And the time for adaptability don't just happen. It takes time. So these old things, these old demons, as we say, as the person tried to make an upward trajectory or as they uh, as they begin the transformation they still have to deal with the old man they still have to deal with the things that obviously give them the urge and and give them that feeling that they want regardless if it's right or wrong this is the truth this is happening if you if you if you haven't encountered it, okay. But this is happening. This 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 young people tell you they're doing the wrong things, and they and they be like, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Why are you lying? I don't know why. You just just make me feel secure. Why are you demotivated? I don't believe I can make it. I don't believe I could. I don't believe I. I don't believe because there's no one around me that believe either. And then, in one moment, they begin to believe and they they start feeling like I can. And then, in a twinkling of an eye, something is reminding them. They you know, I don't know. You will listen out there, but there's a lot of people scared of success. a lot of people scared they they know so much failure and even when something looks successful they get scared because it's like mm -mm, this 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 shouldn't happen this or they get so scared that they want to stay in 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 the zone where they are custom even though it's bad but it gives them a sense of comfort because they know even the success of the unknown, they're scared to go towards because they don't want that feeling of emptiness if it don't happen. So they stay 
in a dangerous place because it's comfortable, even though it's it can be disturbing. And it's something that you can't, most people can't understand. Most people will go crazy. Like, what is wrong with you? Why you can't? Don't you see that there's something good, but but you don't realize that that thing that is not good is their comfort zone because that's what they know. Because they, they have never been transformation. And unfortunately, coaches, people that, that work with young people, either in an individualized um, space or in a group um, space, or in a collective space, you are constantly feeding either what they've done and what they continue to do or a, something that they need to move towards. And it takes meritocracy. You have to earn the right to do that. And fortunately for soccer, they have created a system that is constantly evolving to how you can do that and why we say we want to do it, but yet we stay away from that process. It's crucial. Is, it, is, is there no desire to truly help? Have you lost your way? Have people lost their way because of societal norms and expectations? Excuse me. You don't do the right things because it's it's not about the right things. It's, it's about the convenience. I, I, will, I will take five players and, and they're all different age group, but you know, one is seven, one is one is 12, one is 19, but I'm going to run one session for all of them because guess what? You know, it's 30 bucks for, for each one. And it's an hour, and, and we will make do of it. But how is a nine-year-old doing the same thing as a 13-year-old? Even on the, on the growth, on the growth block, as I call it, there are different stages of different expectations and standards, you know. And if you're doing that, well, show the system in which you're using to do that. Because if you're just doing it, which obviously... You won't just if you if you had a system in place, you will be you will be very careful to be putting that out in the social space. But we obviously we maybe we we're falling victim to the situation, and you know that's what the people expect, that's what the parents expect, that's what you know, that's what everybody's doing. So I do it, but you know, what about the young player. What about this individual who's in front of you? Is there any consideration? Is there, you know, is there any care? So something we have to take stock of. It's important for you parents to ask the tough questions and to demand the system in which your child is under in terms of their growth and development if you so care. You call it just, they're just going to do something recreational. This is a life. <laughs> I mean, you're just doing something recreational. I hope that you will, you know, that you will you will take stock of this, that you don't just get to change when you're 18 and 19 years old. You know, I hear people say it all the time. Well, they'll grow to that. They will grow to that. You think something will just happen automatically. No, growth is by intentionality. It's not by wishful thinking or by age or by nothing you have to intentionally plan to grow you have to you can't even put up a house without a plan 
You can't just wake up and be like, I'll put up, I'll, I'll go build a house. You can go say it, but how much, how, how many nails you need, how many cement you need, how many chic rock you need, how many, how many steel, how many things you need, how many sand, how much sand you need. What how how you just gonna be like, okay, well, just no, 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 no. You have to plan. You have to plan. And as you plan and you begin the process, you you could see you could see growth happening from the foundation to now the beams and like who people who know about uh, construction, uh, they will tell you the stages that you need to go through before you could look at the house. The house won't just go from zero to hundred. There's no quantum leap. Hi Russia, good to see you. Oh Paul is well. Thanks for being on, on the live podcast. Please do share. But it's so important that you understand that every time you put your child within an environment, the blocks can, the blocks begin to pile on. The blocks can the blocks begin. The blocks, the house, the process of building the house. Is in motion. So you don't just get to just break the house down just like that. You could, some people will have to, they have to put it, they have to put some kind of some kind of explosive in the in the in the in the in, in, in the bottom so that the house could fall down and go to the ground. And then some you have to break it piece by piece. If you want to rebuild, you have to cut it down. You don't just get to say, well, I'm going to build a house on a house. That's crazy. Especially if the house is built on a sand. Good, good luck. So it's not just... <laughs> We have to we have to move away from just saying, well, my child just playing rec. So what? Yeah, let your child play rec, but that environment must be doing something with regards to self-development, transformation. This child will not be seven all their life. They're not this child will not be 13 all their life. This child will not be 12 all their life. So a lot of what they're doing at 12 is what they will take to 15. How how is it we don't how 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 is it we don't understand that? How? How? Come on. How is it we don't how is it we don't understand that whatever is happening at nine will transform and will transform into 12 if not been if not dealt with? Guidance. My second point, guidance. Why meritocracy is so important? Because it produces guidance. You must be selected on merit. And, and I'm saying it's important because if you don't have it, and you've been, you've been put in situations for so many reasons, rather than you have Earn the right through the process. There's a process for soccer. There is a process. There's a federation and there's a clear pathway of that says who can develop a player in the United States. It's in England. It's in Holland. It's in Spain. It's in, it's everywhere in the world that plays soccer. There is a clear pathway to say who will coach what. Now, considering all things, that could be a choice of, of whoever is making that choice. But what is principle? There is something that you need to earn to be put in a situation to say that you can develop players. That you can guide players. It's important to have it. <laughs> you know without guidance people fall. 
none of us will, who's not familiar with the Amazon, will just go into the Amazon. Most people go on a trip to another country and they ask for a chauffeur or someone to take them around. Why? Because they don't want to miss nothing. Or they don't want to end up in a place that they're not supposed to end up. Because they're unfamiliar territory. So adults use it. Things that they're unfamiliar with, they see guidance. And the only person who could give them guidance is, is the person that is competent enough to take them where they need to go, show them the danger, show them the things that are that they that that will make them excited, and all these things because this person have earned the right to do what they're doing, and then you utilize them for your best interests. Because you you don't want to uh, be in a situation where you're uncomfortable. So merit produces guidance. When there's no merit, there is no guidance. Thus, the young player will fall at some point in time. Um, you might say, well, that might not be true. Well, do you want to take that risk? There's no safety. There's not a safety net there when somebody lacks competency and they're trying to guide you. If somebody lacks competency and they're trying to guide you, they're not competent within that field to the extent to bring about transformation, then they will obviously lead you in a path that is not safe. And the difference with someone who is competent, they will show you and then you will hold them accountable. I'm not going to name a club, but uh, name the club, but I was privy to, uh, you know, being in, in the environment and, 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 and listening and learning. And one of the key things is that they set out these benchmarks and these key things that their differences, obviously, and, and, and nothing is in a straight line. Um, there's challenges and there, there will continue to be challenges in any environment that wants to grow uh, because uniqueness must come out. So they always there will always be challenges. But one of the things it, it's, it's, it's important is to have clear things that you can always go back to and say, okay, regardless of what you say, what you say, what I say, this is what we stand on. This is what holds us accountable. So it's not about perfection. It's about responsibility and accountability in what you're doing. So that is the safety net. And somebody's don't have the merit or don't have the, have not earned because that's what meritocracy is about. It's about, for me, from my perspective, it's about earning the right within the context to be able to guide people in this, in, in this process. When you haven't done that, um, you decrease the ability to provide safety. And safety, is for me, is the... It's, it's the progression in, in terms of where the child wants, where the player wants to go, where the athlete is trying to go. And you, pre, you provide a safe zone for them to know that through this process, you will be here, there, there. And you know what? It's okay. You don't have to be afraid or lose your mind or, or you know, want to turn back and want to give up because it, it's a safe place. This is okay. This is okay. Don't worry about it. You're supposed to be here. No, you don't find that in an environment where there's no meritocracy. What you find is coaches who are looking for psychological safety, 
So they make themselves and they talk like if, you know what, I done that. I did that. Why, why is she not doing it? Why is he not doing it? You want to know? Go go at the go at the youth games and and you and hear a code says, but 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 I taught you that just yesterday. How come you can't do it? Psychological safety, because that coach know if the child not doing it and they lose the game, there's parent meeting and it's his name. His name in the pool of replacement. So for him to provide some psychological safety and to, to prove to the parents that I taught it, he have to make sure he's saying it. Like, come on, we did this only yesterday. So everybody said, well, coach did. But it might, <laughs> sorry, but it might not be that the coach is trying to like prove something, but that's the environment he's in. If he can't, if he can't say that, if he don't say that, he knows that maybe I lose my I lose my income. So he needs a psychological safety net. There's no guidance. There's no safety. Um, you know, people say you're supposed to fail moving upwards. You should fail your way to success because of the process. There'll be a moment of regression. That's why they say fail, from my perspective, fail your way to success. Because as you go forward, at every stage, there'll be a regression because you're learning new things and you need time to adapt. The problem is when you're failing downwards. And without merit, it means that there's lack of guidance. You are, you think you're going somewhere while you're going in the opposite direction. So there's no regression to progression there. Um, there's only regression. Because anything in motion will stay in motion. And gravity is normally not our friend when we're going downwards. We go much faster. When time to go, we go. And it, it seemed to be said about fitness. You know, when, when, when you are trying to be fit, you hit a peak. And when you hit that peak, the only way you can do, the only way you can go is downwards. That's why they have something called maintenance because you will you will peak once you get to that top. The only way, the only place you can go is downwards. So you have to do now maintenance work to make sure that you don't fall too deep. That's guidance. So you're going fast and it's looking good and then you hit 14 and you realize that you don't know how to read and understand the game and make good decisions. You get to 15 and now you're hearing about the, the first time you're hearing about defensive principle. Now you get to 14 and you don't know the difference between how and when when it relates to technical proficiency. And then, Wow. You see the frustration. You see. You see how parents and players get frustrated with the coach because they're seeing regression. And the regression is coming because they have to learn new things if they're gonna if they will make the jump that they're trying to make. So guess what they do? They blame you because for me. In, in the soccer society, it's it's a reactive one. It's not a pro. It's not a proactive one. It's just not. It's it's reactive. So when things not going well, they like to point a finger, but they don't know what is happening because they're not competent. 
and they and 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 and, and not competent to to insult, but they're not competent because they. They trusted whatever system they trusted because that's whatever they know, that's what they did or what they allowed. You not knowing something and now it's being given or it's being taught and there's regression, you can't just go and, and just um, try to dismiss and, and, and put somebody down and their integrity and say they don't know nothing about development and on and all manner of those things. You, you that, That's... That's so reactive. It's so reactive. Because if you sit down and you really ask the question, and you you will know from coaches who actually focus on development, you will have a better understanding of what is happening to your athlete, not just from a tactical standpoint, not just from a technical standpoint, also from a physical standpoint, from a psychological standpoint, from an emotional standpoint. This is a roller coaster ride. Development is not just kicking a ball and dribbling. It's about behavior. That means your everything about you is involved in this process. Oh, I just want my child to be a, to shoot the ball well. That don't happen without changing of behaviors. There is no development without change in behavior. <laughs> you can't. You can't. Because everything is muscle memory. Do you know that you're not playing with your conscious brain on the field? Especially at the level where some of the players talk about that they want to go I might be mistaken, but they, they said about 84% of your action or, or, or what is being used in a high-intensity game is your muscle. Your brain. <laughs> oh, you got to have a... No, you, it's, the build, it's the planning and the development process that allow the athlete to be able to retrieve those things through muscle memory when they're running for 90 minutes at high intensity. So if their behavior don't change and it's all about the convenience, then there's no little to no guidance. And it takes meritocracy. It takes the coaches, it takes people that are involved in this process to take the time to learn, to earn, so that they can bring about transformation, so that they can bring about, they can give good guidance, not perfect guidance, but guidance where there's something there that we could go back to and be held accountable. We have to be held accountable. Every program in front of them, there's a player facing document, there's a club facing one, there's a staff facing one. How many times is that presented in front of you when you're doing your evaluations? Excuse me. What is guiding this process? Or you receive a paper that says, okay. Your child need to be your child need to improve in hard work. What is the representation of hard work? What how do you define hard work? What does that look like? Can you objectively show this child what it means? What it looks like? No, you say again, guys, come on. We know this is true. We know this is true. This is happening in school where it's about moving the child to the next grade. They have to show them. 
They have to have parent meeting. They have to sit down and talk to the parents about what is happening with the behavior of the child and how it's affecting their learning. And that behavior needs to change if the child if the child is going to learn. If a child comes home with an F, the teacher will run to the school to find out what is going on in the classroom. But when the child is failing on the field, the coach don't know what he's doing. We need a new coach. That team is that, that team on the other side is doing it. Why? How we can't do that? I was met with that one time. A, a parent come to me to ask me, uh, uh, okay, this what's wrong with this coach? Why is this team over there doing this and we can't do it? I said, maybe we have we just have a different system. Maybe you need to understand what system they're using that they're doing that and what we're doing and it's not working. But that was their justification. So if one school producing all of these, these, these top students and your school struggling or your child struggling, so we should just get rid of that school, that whole school. Get rid of all the teachers. It got nothing to do with the child's behavior, with your behavior, with the environment the child is in on a constant basis. It have got nothing to do with that. It's straight somebody's fault. Reactive. Reactive. So we need to get back to that. We need we need to be able to provide um, guidance that all of us is is you never know enough. When you think you know something, two years down the line, you will be like, "Wow, this is totally different." I need to. I need to be able to adapt. I need to be able to adjust. I need to understand the new trends and get on board with that. Um, we ruin it for we ruining it for the kids. We ruin it for the young athletes who just got a dream. They don't know yet about accountability and and consistency, and and we have the responsibility to guide them uh, to that process, and 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 we're failing. When that time is passed, fortunately, you can't get it back. Time is not a friend of none of us. Time will move with or without you. It will be 10 o'clock if you like it or not. You can't change the clock. You can't say, well, yeah, you could go change it, but you, you will be later every event because you're working on your time. Not the time that is guiding all of us in this process. You don't get to change time. You don't get to decide time. Time will happen with or without you. So, so our young people can't get it back. When they pass the age of 12 and they're not technically sung, you, you, you can't come and say you'll get technically sung in, 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 two, in two weeks. When you're 15, you have no coordination. So now at 19, where you're supposed to be learning about principles, you mad because we got to go back to how do you pass the ball? What is the point of having principles, but you don't have the technique? So now your brain knows something. Now you have to slow down to execute it. But how, how are you going to do it? How? At what level? No, you cannot. It's impossible. And I hear all these young people saying, oh, I'm going to make it. I'm going to the highest level. And, oh, okay. Unfortunately, in order to do that, you need meritocracy. You need people who are selected by merit, on merit, because it produces right guidance. So finally, as we go, people. People need to select, be selected on merit because of people. And you might say, well, people, what do I have to do with this? Um, you have to have people that care. And I think the world is failing. Uh, you know, it's just been dawning on me for, you know, a couple of weeks now that, you know, it's a world where people just don't care. There's, there's no care. 
the most the most important thing now is about generational wealth it's about money it's about you know when people and, and when someone come after you it's about money when when someone wants to do something or don't do something it's about money when and a person makes a decision about your future it's often time about money and money answer at all things it's a good thing um you need money that's why it's here but the love of money is also the root of all evil because the word love is to give so when you replace that with money then you messed up the definition so now it's about taking it's about getting it's not about giving because that's not the definition of love so the love of money it changes uh, what love represent so you seen it more that people care less about people about the well-being of people and they will come after you with every bit of their energy for money um and it's their choice justifiable or not uh, i don't really care about that i care about the reason the reason so we don't care and a lot of our drive to our young people within this soccer environment it's more we driving them into the future from an economic standpoint so a lot of our motivation a lot of our encouragement uh, in terms of how we support young people maybe if i'm wrong you know correct me but what i have experienced and what i'm experiencing is a lot of what people talk about or how they encourage uh, their 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 athlete or how they encourage their players it's more from an economic standpoint and not from a purpose driven standpoint thus i say you know there's a lack of care because before you were formed your life was already planned out you were already ordained that this is what you need to do and if we don't have people who care about that then um we take in a very important aspect away from one's life You can never abuse a thing and get the best out of it. So we have to care. And when we understand and when we we have truly earned the ability to be in the environment where we develop people, uh, then we will make people first. We will care about their behavior. We will care about their attitude. we will not make decisions on their attitude based on if they will come back and pay or not we will make decisions about their behavior because it helps them long term they might not like it now they might not like it tomorrow but they have to go out and face the world at some point in time on their own and you have walked this life before for a reason to give to help with self development to give proper guidance and to care about their life when they move forward and saka can do that it has done that for so many people and i want to encourage all 
or young people. So associate yourself with those that can prove that they have earned. They are basing their model on merit. There are clear expectations out there. There are clear tasks out there for what a development coach supposed to represent and what it needs to look like. You are not taking your child to a maths tutor if they are not qualified. You are not doing that. You're not saying, well, he or she just need, you know, just need to do extra classes in maths. No. You will look for the most qualified. You will look for accountability. You will look for what they what they did in the past, what how they have transformed and that that student and you know students before. Good. You will do all of that. Why are you treating a game that has so much psychological effect, so much emotional effect? Why are you treating like it is it's nothing where you could just put your child in something and be like, just go enjoy yourself and have fun? It's not destroying people's pocket. I know that for sure. It's not. It's not destroying clubs. It's not destroying coaches it's not destroying you you get to do what you need to do in a convenient way so it's not it's not it's not affecting you in no way really because it's working around you it's happening all around you and that's and, and again that needs to then that needs to have consideration i'm not being inconsiderate of that but i'm saying what is the plan behind all of that if the child is being destroyed holistically not just from a soccer perspective but holistically um, i hope that we reached our objective um, in this podcast um, you know because that was the outcome that we will renew our faith in our purpose in our gifts um, so that your personal life, your convenience will not destroy your purpose life. Because life without purpose is dead. You will have happy days, you will have happy times, but I'm telling you, when the road get rough, when the times get hard, when devastation come to your door, when pain come to your door, what shall it be? What will happen then? You will have to have something in you that says, we pay, we pin may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You will have to have something in you that says, tomorrow, Will be a better day. You'll have to have something in you that says, There's an opportunity there for me tomorrow. I will live one more day. I will I will look forward for another day. And the people who can't find those things, hmm, those people become very evil. Those people become very dangerous. Those people are obsessed with malice. Those people can't move on until they get you. Those people can't move on until they take their own lives. They move on into another life. That's they move on. They take their own life so they can move on into another life. They don't want this life anymore. Some people are obsessed with bitterness because they have nothing in them that will drive them that is not external. So they have to look for an external thing 
to feed to feed their hurt to feed what has happened to them to feed somebody doing them wrong they have to find something external I hope that's not you parents I hope that is not you coaches I hope it's not you parents to coaches and I hope it's not parents to coach to coaches to parents I hope because we all will have to need something in us we will need something in us that belongs to us that was given to us to keep moving us forward within us because if you can't find it May God have mercy. So, stay purpose-driven. There are more hard times to come. There are more struggles to come. Uh, there are more challenges to come. But stay the course. Surround yourself with leaders. People who are willing to inspire you. People who are willing to make you uncomfortable. Obviously in appropriate ways that fit your age and your stage of development um, or will challenge you. People who don't always get it right but understand in order to grow, there must be some amount of regression. Give yourself a chance. You were born to win. Success is not for some people. It's for every single person that breathe in. And every single person that have a life. Success is for all of us. It's not based on nothing. It is based on the fact that you are breathing. That you have life and you have an opportunity. Look for self-development. Look for guidance. And look for people that care. That only comes from people who are selected by merit. But you're in a demerit society. So be careful. Be watchful. If you have eyes, let them see. And you have ears, let them hear. Have a good night. Stay blessed. Please do share. Now is the time to keep your family warm with quality insulation for your home from Pro Insulation Company. At Pro Insulation, we solve all your residential and commercial insulation needs. Attics, crawl spaces, walls and ceilings, new and existing homes, and we offer traditional insulation and spray foam. Call Pro Insulation Company today for your free in-home estimate. For all your insulation needs. Leave it to the pros and call Pro Insulation Company in Plainfield today.